Welcome to today's webinar. It is analysis of volume indicators and interpreting price movements. We're happy to have you join us here. We try to provide a lot of different educational content for different trading strategies and educational providers along with information on various trading software and programs that we offer and different services. So we always try to give you a lot of different content. Uh, we're happy to have Mike Harmon from Warrior Trading provide the presentation here today. Uh, he's going to be discussing uh, timing price breaks, confirming trends and price reversals, and uh, you know, giving some signals that he recognizes from, from different uh, trends and, and movements here. Mike's full-time day trader, trading mentor, owner of Warrior Trading. Um, so he's been doing this for quite a while and doing it very well, providing education to a lot of the Warrior members. We're very happy to have him present. He's done presentations before for Lightspeed. Uh, happy to have him back. We are ready to get started here. I'm just going to do the quick disclaimer that uh, we would have here. This presentation is for informational purposes only. Nothing presented today should be construed as investment advice or recommendation to buy, sell, or hold any security or contract. Since we don't know everyone's investment objectives or risk tolerance, we're not endorsing any specific trading strategies. Security derivative and futures trading involves a substantial risk of loss. is not suitable for all investors. Each investor must consider whether this is suitable investment since you may lose all or more of your investable investment. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Lightspeed is a division of Line Brokerage LLC. Line Brokerage LLC is not affiliated with these third-party market commentators, educators, or service providers. Data, information, material, content are provided for informational or educational purposes only. This content neither is nor should be construed as an offer, solicitation, or recommendation to buy or sell any securities or contracts. Any investment decisions made by the user through such, of such content is solely based on the user's independent analysis, taking into consideration financial circumstances, investment objectives, risk tolerance, Line Brokers does not endorse, offer, nor recommend any of the services or commentary provided by any of the market commentators, educations, service providers. Any information used to execute any trading strategy is solely based on the independent analysis of the user. Okay, thank you for that. Um, guys, just note, you can contact us for any additional information. You'd like to test out a demo of the Lightspeed Trading Platform or open an account with Lightspeed, feel free to contact us. You can contact me directly, rlipson at linebrokerage.com. You can also email sales at lightspeed.com and certainly request a demo or use all the resources on the Lightspeed website. Uh, so thank you for that quick uh, disclaimer here. Now to get started, I'm gonna hand the mic over and presentation over to Mike here and we're going to get started. So just hold on one moment guys and we're, we're, we're about to uh, get started here. So, uh, Mike, you should be able to take the controls here and start sharing the screen. All right. Good afternoon, guys. Well, I'm excited to be here. Thanks, Rob, and uh, everyone over at Lightspeed for having me back. I definitely enjoy doing these uh, these webinars for everyone, and um, it's a good opportunity to take some time and uh, talk a little bit about the type of trading that, uh, that we teach and uh, mentor. Um, through our Warrior Trading courses and um, uh, mentor sessions. So um, I want to talk a little bit about today about a really important topic, um, volume profile anal analysis. And um, it's, it's often an overlooked topic. You, you may or may not have heard uh, you know, these, these uh, terms used in this uh, sense, but uh, basically we're going to talk a little bit about analyzing volume. And um, again, this is a really important factor if you are trying to become a consistently profitable day trader. You need to understand what volume is and uh, how it affects price. So what we're going to talk about today is how to identify that, how to utilize it. And uh, after this uh, presentation today, you guys will be able to take this away and implement it into your own trading as soon as uh, tomorrow. Um, so. That's what we're gonna talk about today, guys, volume profile analysis. Um, before we get started, I do have to um, run through, um, as Rob did, the disclaimers. You know, here at uh, Warrior Trading, um, just a quick disclaimer, we're providers of education, right? We uh, teach our students how to trade the markets. And as educators, we're not able to give you specific financial advice. Our sole job is really to empower you with an education that 
gives you the skills and the strategies to uh, to navigate the market. So just understand that um, you know we're here to teach you guys. Um, obviously, don't take anything that um, we're we're teaching you that to uh, as investment advice. All right. So just want to make sure everyone understands uh, the dis disclaimer portion um, of that. But uh, moving right along. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm Mike Herman um, of Warrior Trading. I'm the Director of Education. Um, I graduated from the Florida State University in 2009 um, with two degrees, one in finance and real estate. And um, you know, I focused a lot on executive level uh, education in behavioral finance, which I really had no interest in um, the financial markets um, stock markets per se at that point, really realizing the potential of it. Um, I was just trying to position myself to be in um, a business situation um, for when I graduated. But the time I came out of school, um, there really was uh, no opportunity in finance or real estate, as most of you probably know, when we had the big uh, financial collapse. Um, so I had to um, sort of find something that would allow me to uh, create income. And there wasn't a position in the public space for me to get a job. So I did dabble in uh, stock trading when I was, was in school. Um, and, you know, I, I found that there was a huge amount of potential here if you could um, grasp the concept of being able to become a successful day trader. So I started to focus uh, solely on learning how to navigate the markets. And, um, you know, I finally was able to become profitable a few years later after, um, you know, a lot of losses and a lot of trial and error. And um, it was one of those things that, you know, once I was able to achieve that, that success part of it, it really made everything that I went through worthwhile, as, as many as you probably can attest to as well. And my strategy can be described as a uh, mainly momentum-based approach with, um, you know, heavy emphasis on advanced technical analysis and market sentiment. And basically, I am solely concerned with the technical analysis of a stock. That's going to be my um, niche, if you will, where I can um, tell you with a very high level of predictability and certainty that we can expect a stock to move in this direction based off of what we're seeing um, take place on um, w w within a technical analysis. So um, that's where I am able to teach you guys how to navigate the markets. And uh, we're going to do that today and uh, learning about volume. All right. So what are you going to learn today? Well, um, again, volume profile analysis and high probability trade selection. So volume profile analysis is simply being able to read what the volume is doing. All right. Volume precedes price. And this is going to tell you when a stock and with what magnitude it is going to move. Um, I'm going to show you between these three factors here, timing, precision, price breaks, confirming the trend, trend exhaustion or price and price reversals. So this is basically how to assess volume to help us determine the market's intentions across these three critical factors. And again, this is to greatly increase your trading probabilities. These are the only three possible scenarios when trading momentum, right? And it's, it's super critical that you understand that there's three scenarios. If you learn how to spot them, it grace, greatly reduces your um, risk of having um, losing trades, right? So knowing how, how to identify each, uh, you'll be able to create an edge that, again, will put you again uh, ahead of 90% of the retail traders that exist out there trying to become profitable. So I'm going to teach you how to do this. And um, again, when you leave here today, you'll be able to take this stuff applied in your own trading. And it'll definitely open your eyes as to um, how to stay on the right side of the market. So again, we're going to learn a little bit about how this volume translates into being able to select these high probability trades that um, you know you can expect to move in your favor when you have this volume um, profile uh, criteria that has been met. All right. So 
The Trader's Edge. Now, this is something I cover heavily in our courses uh, within the Warrior system, and there's a very specific reason for this. And I'm going to talk a little bit, I spend a little bit of time on this because it's really important you understand and grasp this concept um, as we move forward into uh, talking about uh, this specific approach utilizing volume. All right, so a trading edge is defined as a refined approach where the ability to identify and act upon a specific entry and exit point will allow for an overall positive outcome over time. So from a mathematical standpoint, a statistically positive outcome is the goal. Without an approach that satisfies this requirement, nothing else matters. And basically what this means is that if you don't have a specific approach that you follow time after time, day after day, trade after trade, you can you cannot expect to see any sort of results, any positive consistent results. All right, and the reason I spend a lot of time on this and talk a lot about the trader's edge and understanding what's your edge, right? Ask yourself what your edge is. You should be able to answer that question. If you ask me what my edge is, it's technical analysis and volume analysis, all right? You have to be able to identify what your edge is. If you don't know what it is, then you need to take a step back and understand what that is. And again, the reason I'm covering this and want to spend time on understanding what your edge is, is because when we talk about volume and technical analysis, that is all you need to uh, see these trades work. All right, so I know that if I have my volume criteria met and my technical analysis criteria met, we're going to see um, big trades, big moves in the market, all right? So make sure you understand what your edge is. Is it trading reversals? Is it, um, you know, is it uh, trading momentum? Is it scalp trading, right? What type of uh, edge do you have? And again, um, realizing what your edge is and what makes up the edge will definitely help you um, see this, see the market and see your trades with much more clarity, all right? So it's an important um, factor to consider because I know when I started, I spent several years going through the markets trying to figure out you know, what worked as anyone else would, but I wasn't really uh, tuned into you know, what, what did I feel comfortable doing? What was working for me? Um, you know, I, I wasn't able to see that because of all the stuff that wasn't working for me. It was overshadowing the stuff that was working. So sometimes it takes some, some investigation and, um, you know, uh, post-processing, if you will, to really understand what about uh, your trading is consistent. And that's what you need to focus on uh, to help you become consistently profitable in a shorter period of time. And again, for me, it's volume, reading the volume, reading the technicals. All right, so volume is the most important factor in identifying price movement. Now, volume precedes price. And again, you'll hear me say this several times throughout this, uh, throughout this presentation, but it's because you have to understand that concept in order to um, be able to um, actually put this into uh, effect. So understand at the very basic principles of market structure that in order for a stock to move, it needs volume, right? A stock will not move up or down if there is no trading activity. So the more trading activity you have, which is volume, the more you can expect uh, the volatility to be, which is movement. As day traders, we are looking for movement, uh, short periods of movement to profit, all right? And um, if you can identify when this volume is coming and going, this will help you identify these precision points at which to not only take a trade, but know when the move is be starting to become exhausted. And also when the move has become exhausted, when a potential reversal in price is about to happen or very close to it. And what this allows us to do is be able to take the most from the moves that are occurring. Right? It's not jumping in for 10 or 15 cents um, you know, with the stock to go on to move you know, several uh, percentage points or dollars from your actual entry. Right? By, able, by being able to read this volume and the volume profiles that occur at these precision price breaks, 
um, again, will keep you in the move long, uh, keep you in the move for a longer period of time, and this all means bigger profits. All right. So again, understanding that volume is the most important factor in identifying price movement is super critical um, as we go forward here, because again, this is something that um, will really help you bring clarity to, hey, is this breakout going to work? Is this breakdown? really going to be the start of a big trend or is it just happening on lackluster volume and you have no interest in really being involved in it all right i know for me um when i'm looking at a trade if it doesn't have my volume requirements i really have no interest in it even if it does go on to move because i know that the move is probably not going to be as much magnitude as is with a move that has um substantial volume all right so um, let's move into what is volume and volume analysis, right? What are they? Volume, as most of you are probably familiar with, it represents the number of shares or contracts that have been traded or, uh, over a given time period. Traders like us, they rely on volume as a key metric to gain insight into several important factors, including the immediate liquidity of an asset and to measure the potential of an impending move. So for me when i'm looking at a trade i need to know that it has one a lot of volume two high relative volume and what that allows me to do is it allows me to uh, decide on what type of position am i going to trade right am i going to trade on the larger side of my position or am i going to trade on the smaller side of my position how much liquidity does something have right if it doesn't have as, as much liquidity as you know another trade then I'm probably going to size down, right? Because I know that um, the the chances for a uh, you know a slower move or um, you know potentially more volatility since it's a little bit lesser volume uh, that brings upon a little bit of extra risk. So I can use this as a measure to size into my trade, all right? Um, volume analysis. So this is an advanced technical trading approach that involves a careful analysis of volume trends and profiles in conjunction with price movements to determine the significance of the changes in securities price. So what this is doing is it's taking the volume that um, you see at the bottom of your charts. Um, and instead of looking at it bar by bar, you're now looking at it in more of a um, broader context, a higher level approach, right? And trying to see the trend of volume. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Is it staying flat, right? What signs are there that there may be an impending move coming or no move at all, right? For most of you, I know it was for me when I started, I had this graph at the bottom of my charts that was different, you know, different colored bars that was showing the amount of volume that was taking place. I never really thought much of it just because it was by default included on the chart. So I never really paid much attention to it. It didn't really mean anything to me at the time. But as I started to be more involved uh, in the markets and, and spent more time studying how volume affects price movements, it is very clear how volume affects the price. So for most of you, um, you know, again, start paying attention to the volume profile in relation to what the move is actually doing, right? Is the stock ramping higher? And is there volume coming into the move or is the stock moving higher and the volume is decreasing into the move, right? There is a big difference, right? It's not just that the stock is moving higher. What's the volume doing? Is it supporting the move, right? There's a huge difference there, huge difference there. And I'm going to show you some examples as to why that's a huge uh, difference and, and how it can affect your trading decision. So um, again, when you start watching moves from here on out, pay attention to what the volume is doing into the move, right? Ideally, what you wanna see is you wanna see volume support the move, right? So what does that mean? Well, that means you wanna see volume increasing as the move is occurring. That's telling you that there's real buyers and sellers, um, that the trend is real, and that you're likely to see continuation with some sort of magnitude. If a, if a stock is moving and the, and the price breaks through um, your breakout point or breakdown point, but there's no volume to support the move, guess what's going to happen? False breaks that all of us have probably been caught in 
a lot of us probably continue to get caught in and you try to figure out how to avoid those situations. I know that's one of the top questions that we see um, uh, on our support staff is how do you avoid false breaks? It's volume, right? Follow the volume and you will definitely be well ahead of the curve on um, what type of movement you can expect to see. All right, so follow the volume. Right, follow the volume. What is the volume doing? This should tell you, are you going to stay uh, in the trade? Um, are you going to get out of the trade? Are you going to start taking profits? Or are you going to even add into your trade as I do on many of my, um, my positions? Because I'm trading stocks that are moving on high volume. And this allows me, like we talked about in the last slide, that it allows me to measure the type of liquidity that we're working with. If I have high liquidity, which is high volume, and there's volume to support the move, you can bet that I am adding into my trade when probably most people are taking profits. And that's the difference of being able to um, uh, show or um, lock in big profitable trades, all right? It's counterintuitive, yes, because we're all human. We know how hard it is to get a profit. So when we see profit on our screens, we do what any um, human would do is take the profit, right? That's why adding into the move as it's going in your direction or in your favor is counterintuitive. Yes, it's difficult to do, but once you understand how to do it and why you're doing it, you will definitely see a huge difference in your trading results, all right? So follow the volume, volume precedes price. Again, we talked about this several times, how reading the volume um, as we come into a point where let's say you're trading a bull flag or a bear flag, very simple technical patterns. And as you're coming into this bull flag, it's, it's beginning to break. Is there volume ramping up as, you, as it's breaking or is there just no volume or is it still decreasing, right? If the volume is increasing as you start to um, break out of the bull flag, that's probably telling you that it's going to move, right? Volume comes before price, right? Or if the volume is flat or decreasing before the move, probably need to be really careful or not trade it at all because it's likely that the move is not gonna be anything real or it's gonna be a false break. All right, so volume is the only indicator that is needed to accurately predict price movement and in turn produce momentum. Volume is a function of herd mentality, which means that as the volume increases at key price points, so will the magnitude of the move. For example, the beginning of a trend. Okay, so when I say the volume is the only indicator needed to ac accurately pre predict price movement, what I mean by this is that you really do not need any sort of oscillating indicator such as RSI, MACD, stochastics. Any of that stuff is lagging, which you may have heard before. All that stuff is going to do is give you an idea of the overall sentiment of the stock, okay? Yes, a stock could be um, strong, but is the move really going to continue? The only way you'll be able to accurately predict that is by utilizing volume. So you can get rid of all those other indicators that you may have on your chart that are probably causing you uh, paralysis by analysis and simply just follow the volume profiles. And again, it'll put you ahead of all those indicators and that by default puts you ahead of 90% of retail um, traders. You'll see on my charts that um, I only use volume and I only use um, the daily technical levels. That's it. I don't use any moving averages. I don't use any oscillators. It's all reading the technicals and the volume. Okay. And again, volume is a herd mentality, which again, that just means that as you see more volume pour in, it means a lot of people see the same thing. All right. And as momentum traders, herd mentality is, is actually somewhat of a, um, a benefit to us because we can become part of the action and trade the move that's occurring. All right, so we wanna see herd mentality because that's gonna be volume, which volume means liquidity, volume means magnitude in the move, and all that stuff equates to profits, okay? So now that we've covered the basics of volume and market structure, I want to move into a few examples where I'm actually going to show you visually how to uh, interpret what you're seeing on your charts. And we'll talk about um, this trade first, which is a Twitter trade that we took just at the end of last week. 
Um, they had an earnings report and, uh, you know, that it made a nice move. But I want to show you a few things here that, um, you know, were really interesting and allowed us to essentially pinpoint the entry on this and pinpoint the exit. All right. So first off, what you see here on, um, on Twitter is you see that you have this first move up. All right. You have this first move up here right out of the open and it's a strong move. You got a huge volume bar at the bottom, as you can see here, um, where you, uh, let's see my pointer right here. You can see this volume uh, bar at the open and you get this surge up, right? So really nice move to the upside here. And then what happens here is on the first pullback, look what happens. Okay. Look what happens. There is a decline in volume as you pull back, All right? There's a decline in volume as you pull back, which is what you want to see. Why is this what you want to see? Well, if you're looking for a stock to continue, you want to see low volume on the pullback. And what that's telling you there is that the volume on the pullback is uh, less than or decreasing and less than the opening move or the initial move. And all that's telling you there is that the sellers are uh, less than the buyers, right? So there's more people trying to buy this thing than sell it. And then look what happens as it starts to resolve, right? As this trade starts to resolve, it hits this uh, the VWAP right here. And as it starts to revert back higher, look what happens as it starts to revert back higher. Look at the volume spike. Okay, so when I'm watching this, I start to see the volume spike up and this stock start to resolve higher. I know instantly that this is probably going to ignite a bigger move or a, or a trend. And I want to be a part of it because the move is going to be real or at least has a very high potential of being a real move that will continue. So as you can see, you have low volume on the pullback and then you have a high volume resolution. And that's going to tell you that this is the point in time where the move is ready to get started or the best opportunity that you will have to get in the trade for continuation. All right. So that's all you want to look for is um, when you see a pullback occur, you just want to see that the selling on the pullback is less than the initial move up. Okay. Look at the next move. All right. Here is the move. We bought this uh, as it was moving through 40 80s. We sold up here and through 41 40s and 60s and um, we re-entered over here. But how this second pullback worked is as you got that volume spike higher, what happened next is look at the volume decline, right? The volume decline on this pullback, pullback, pullback. As you start to resolve out of the, out of the, um, the bull flag, if you will, you'll start to see the volume ramp back up, right? The volume starts to ramp back up here um, on the volume profile, right? It starts to ramp back up. You start to see that you're breaking the bull flag You've obviously got a strong stock. It's holding a higher low. This, the, the volume is starting to ramp up higher as you're breaking entry, right? Entry and then it moves. Nice move there, continues higher the rest of the day, right? So all you're looking for here is um, volume profiles to be in line with the trend that you're trading, right? What you don't wanna see is high volume on the pullback. If you saw the volume on the pullback to be higher than the initial move, then it's likely to fail or completely reverse. All right, so just being able to identify when that volume is starting to come in, that's the point in time at which you will look to take the entry. Now, some of you might be asking, well, you're on a, um, you're on a one minute chart and by the time that one minute volume has printed, it's already made the move. That's true. But what you're watching for is essentially you're watching the volume profile just as if you were watching a geometric pattern such as a bull flag play out. OK, so think of the volume down here as a bull flag, right? You get the initial move higher and then it pulls back, right? Same as a bull flag. And then it starts breaking out. So once the volume starts breaking out of that apex, which is right down here, as that volume starts surpassing that level, you know that the volume coming in is going to be strong. So you have to do some anticipation, but by trading that general pattern, you can anticipate the move, 
right? So I'm buying here as I see the volume ramping up past that low pullback volume, and I start to take my position and then look for the volume to continue to pour in. All right, so that's a really good example as to how to read the volume profile. It's pretty straightforward and just looking for the same pattern you would look on your um, uh, on your chart of the stock that you're trading. All right, if you see a high volume spike, again, during the pullback, it's likely gonna negate the pattern or negate the move. The move probably won't go anywhere, all right? So that's one example of how to read volume profile. I want to move into um, one more here that will tell you a couple things. There's a lot of things going on in this chart, but I want to show you a couple things of how you can use the volume profile to tell you multiple different things in one single trade. And remember, we, we talked about how volume can do three things, confirm price breaks, it can confirm trend, and also can tell you um, exhaustion or price reversals, all right? And I use it as an exhaustion indicator, right? I typically don't trade reversals. It's not really within my um, strategy set, but I use it as a point in time to tell me that, okay, this move is extended, it's exhausted, it's probably time to exit the majority of my position. And potentially, if, if that is the type of trading that you want to do, flip the position to the other side. All right, so we're gonna talk about a trade here um, where you can very clearly see a, um, a volume ramp. I remember what I talked about in the beginning is you want to see a vol the volume supporting the move. And volume supporting the move is an increase into the move. All right, if you have volume increasing into the move, then you're likely to see a move with some significant magnitude to it, all right? And as, as long as that volume keeps um, keeps pouring in, that stock is likely to keep going, all right? It's only when the volume begins to subside that the, the or, or reach an apex that the, um, the stock is no longer to continue. So what you can see on this trade is an obvious um, volume ramp as the move begins, as it starts to break down, you see the volume pouring in and there's there's no support on this stock until that red line you see there at about 61, All right? There's no support on this stock until 61, which we had marked out again, because we're very technical base traders and we need to know where the next support or resistance is for a couple reasons. We need to know what type of levels we're trading into. We need to know how much room a stock has to move. And being that this trade had a lot of room to move, we were very interested in it. So it's a, a useful um, approach to know your levels for position management, um, trade exhaustion, um, again, breakouts and breakdowns and all that sort of things. And then coupled with volume can really help you um, extract the most possible out of every single trade. All right, so here on this trade, you can see the volume started ramping up, ramping up, continue to ramp up for a long period of time until it actually got to the um, support point that we had there right at 61. So what happens here is a couple things. You've got volume to confirm the trend, but you also have the move moving into a very significant support level. So what's occurring down here is that you've got the volume at the highest that it has reached, but the stock is no longer going any lower because you're now at a level of support. All right, so think about it this way. If you've got all the volume possible and the stock isn't moving anymore, what is that probably telling you? That's probably telling you that the move is now exhausted. The sellers are now done, okay? Especially since you're against a level of support. So what is that going to tell me? That's gonna tell me that the move is exhausted. I'm taking my profits and I'm covering my position, all right? Now, could you use this as a reversal point? Since it's an exhaustion point, it could mean that it is a reversal point. Doesn't always mean it's a reversal point. The only time it does mean it's a reversal point is if it's against a level of support, as you can see here. So once you get the full volume ramp and it peaks on the um, support level and it starts to turn around, that is a reversal point. So in the event that you covered your position, you may want to flip it the other way because it's now holding the support point. The volume is still high and you get a nice move 
back higher, all right? But what we're trying to confirm here is that the trend is real, the move is real, and when is the point to take your profits? When is the final point to be out of the trade? Well, when it's exhausted. How do you tell exhaustion? When you have a ramp and you have the peak of the volume as you hit a support point, okay? So that's really important to understand is how to confirm trend, how to um, know when um, exhaustion or reversal in price is about to occur. All right, so good example there of volume profile. Notice the histogram, right? You get a volume ramp, you start to pull back, and then look what the volume goes flat. The rest of the day, the volume just dies, nothing happens to the stock, right? You may think it's starting to break down here, you may start to think it's breaking down here. Well, there's no volume to support the move. It's still flat, right? So no reason to take this trade. So just notice how you can read this volume profile and reference that against the actual move. Is it supporting the move, All right? So moving on, let's talk about a trade here um, that uh, is a good example of a volume profile um, to the short side. So let's take a look here. Um, as you can see, this is a move down and we get that initial move to the downside and strong volume, right? The first bar of volume is pretty strong. And what happens thereafter is you start to get the relief move or uh, pullback, if you will. I, I usually refer to them as pullback or a relief move. And, and in the case of a trade to the short side, typically refer to it as a relief move back higher. All right, so you get the relief move Look what the volume is doing on the relief move, right? It's declining. It's declining on the relief move. So what do I wait for prior to actually taking a trade? Well, I wanna see a volume spike that breaks the pattern that I'm watching on the volume profile, okay? So if you look down here, you'll see that where that red arrow is, you'll see that it's essentially breaking the pattern, just like a stock would be breaking a bull flag. It's breaking the pattern. You have that really low volume as you're as you're making the relief move and retesting. And once you get the volume spike, look what happens. This volume spike down here at this arrow, this indicates that the move is now beginning to trend. All right, volume spike um, confirms the precision price break. One of the three factors we talked about confirms a precision price break, which is now going to um, confirm the trend right, because you had to have volume increasing into the move. Look what happens here. Volume spike on the move down, low volume relief move. Look at those green bars down here, right? Low volume relief move, and then once you start to break again, volume will start to pour back in and ramp back higher, All right? Ramp back higher, and there you get the, the trend down to, to the lows, and it makes a nice trend um, to, the, to the low of the day. And then look what happens on that low a day bar a high volume spike, right? That's gonna indicate that you now ha have reached potentially what could be an exhausted trend and it may need time to reverse, all right? So that's how you can really sit in these moves and extract the most profits by just simply reading the volume profile, all right? Not every trade is gonna be picture perfect. As you guys know, there's going to be, um, you know, volume profiles that are harder to read. I surely can't read every single one, but um, I sit very patient in my trading, waiting for these very clear volume profiles to present themselves, because when they do, I know that a big trade is probably going to happen. So that is the importance of waiting for these volume profiles to present themselves um, to support the move that you're looking at. And then that's when you can become much more confident to actually act on this trade and potentially add into the move and really lock up some nice winners. All right, so that is a good example of volume profile to the short side. Next, I wanna show you one to um, the long side, a really good example here on volume profile um, to the long side on this stock. But you'll see here, look what happens out of the open. All right, look what happens out of the open. You get this really nice move higher. And remember what we talked about, volume supporting the move. Is the volume supporting the move on this on this trade? Well, let's take a look at the volume profile. Volume is increasing into the move, 
Remember we talked about how volume is to be increasing to support the move in order for this to be a move of some real magnitude, right? Well, you have it. You have the move, you have the volume increasing into the move and there's really no point in exiting the, your full position until you have some sort of signal that, hey, this trend might be exhausted, all right? Now, what I see here is, is very telling in that, all right, the first initial move looks to be exhausted. Why? Well, if you look at this bar here, we've obviously got the volume to support the move higher, but we do have a high of day volume bar, if you will, on this bar, which is correlates with this bar right here. And then the volume just suddenly drops in half, right? Drops in half on this bar, it's still up there, right? The bar still closes up near the highs, but the volume drops substantially. So to me, if I'm looking at that, I'm exiting my position because a potential reversal or the trend has been exhausted. Doesn't mean I can't re-enter, but again, remember, I'm trying to extract the most from every single move that takes place. And that is a good example to show you that while you have volume to support the move, it also tells you at this time that there's no more volume to support the move higher and you're exiting as this bar closes, which is essentially at this time uh, it, during the trade, it's still at the highs. So very clear indication of how to get out and maximize the move. You're getting from top to bottom on this. And look what happens during the pullback, right? Here's your first pullback or relief move. Look what happens to the volume down here. Look what happens to the volume. It's virtually nothing. So the sellers are very, very light on this, all right? It's decreasing. Every bar, it's decreasing. Every bar, it's decreasing as you're pulling back. Then look what happens as the volume profile, what's it doing? It's breaking pattern. Volume profile is breaking pattern here, just like it would in the bull flag. So what do you look for? You look for the stock to do the same thing. It's breaking pattern. You're long right here. And again, volume increasing into the move. Right, volume increasing into the move and continues for a really nice trade higher. Okay, and I typically only will trade after the first pullback. Um, I don't typically trade the second or third ones, depending on how much volume and momentum it has. Um, I, I may or may not, but typically, if I can't get that first pullback uh, to, to align with the volume profile, I typically am not going to trade it thereafter at least at least on a five minute perspective if i'm trading on a faster time frame you know um, a 30 seconds or something of that sorts then obviously i will trade um, more than than one pullback but from a five minute standpoint especially after 10 a.m the volumes and, and momentum start to subside and the volume profiles tend to get harder to read because it's it's not as accurate um it's not as accurate as a depiction because you just don't have momentum to work with. So typically I use it up until 10 or 10.30 and that's when I really um, am done trading um, as it is. So, but again, good example of how to understand that volume supporting the move, look for the exhaustion point, take your profits, look to get back in or re-add on the trade once you get the volume profile to break pattern and the stock also follows suit and you can see the type of, of moves that you get. All right. So good example there of um, good example there of uh, a really nice, uh, clean and easy to read volume profile move. All right. So now what I want to do is you've seen a couple really good examples of how to read volume, um, what you want to see, um, what to look for, what to watch for. Um, but now I want to show you one that what happens when you don't have volume to support the move, okay? This is really important. I'm not gonna, just gonna show you um, stuff that works every single time. I wanna show you what happens a lot of the times when you don't actually have volume to support the move, all right? Otherwise known as a false break. So for those of you that may find yourself getting caught in false breaks a lot of the times, I know I used to until I started realizing how important volume is to have to continue to move the stocks. Um, you know, that's something that you can really use to just avoid that situation altogether. It's very, very rare that we'll get caught in a false break um, just because we're so uh, vigilant to watch the volume. All right, so remember the trade that we just looked at? We saw, we saw volume increasing into the move, right? Um, now look at this trade. You have um, the initial move, but the volume is decreasing. 
Okay, so that's my first red flag to say, okay, well, am I going to trade this stock? Is this going to be something that I'm interested in if it pulls back? And the question is, well, you know, it's going to be tough because I don't have volume to even support the initial move. So what makes me think there's going to be volume to support a secondary move? Sure, it happens sometimes. Is it predictable? A lot less so than ones when we have the volume on the initial move. So you can see that you have low volume into the initial move or it's come, it's it's declining. Right? It's not supporting the move just like the trade that you just saw on this one. Right, you have volume supporting the move. Right, so volume supporting the move on this trade, you have volume decreasing into the move. So that's my first red flag to tell me that this may not be worth um, may not be worth uh, watching. Now remember what I said uh, a few slides back is that if you have a high volume spike on a pullback, it's going to negate the pattern, or it's going to uh, probably be a trade uh, that's not going to continue, or it's not going to work. Or it's going to be a false break. All right, look what happens on this as it starts to do the pullback. Everyone probably sees that red volume bar down here, right? The red volume bar on the pullback breaks pattern of the volume profile. That's an issue because now I know looking at that, that it negates the pattern. But let's say that you're, you don't know anything about volume. You don't really follow volume. You don't know how to utilize or read it. And you start to see this stock kind of curl off the VWAP. It looks like it's going to move higher. You may start trying to buy this right here at 42, anticipate the high a day break, because it has a, I mean, it has a decent looking pattern um, if you look at the stock chart. But look at the volume down below. There's no spike in volume. There's no high volume surge. There's no resolution in volume. It just stays flat. All right, stays flat. Now it starts to fail 42 starts to roll over and then look what happens here, all right? All those people that were trying to buy this and push it through 42 for anyone that was there, they get impatient and they sell. And look at this volume surge that you now have, all right? So this is going to tell you um, a confirmation of trend, right? Remember we talked about that as being one of the factors that volume can help you do is confirm trend. So look what happens once you get the volume spike, right? The volume spike on the sell, what is that going to do for you the rest of the day? It's going to confirm the trend. Volume spike, selling volume spike. All right, look what happens the rest of the day in this thing. It sells off, you know, over 10% from that initial sell down. Okay, so again, a couple things going on here that if you ask me to tell you what, what is likely to happen to this stock and I didn't have volume, I couldn't tell you, right? I couldn't tell you. Even if I had volume six or seven or eight years ago, I wouldn't be able to tell you what was going to happen. But now I can quickly glance at that volume profile and I say, okay, you've got a low volume into the initial move. It's not really supporting it. You've got a high volume spike on the pullback that negates the move. Um, there's probably a 90% chance or higher that this move is going to fail um, or it's just not going to do anything. It's going to sit sideways. And the other thing is that it could have a huge hard reversal just like it did here. All right. So that's how... Um, to identify trades that, again, could be false breakout, could just be duds, just not gonna move, or to help you keep you out of this situation um, that could be quite painful if um, you're not paying attention, right? Um, but notice how that even though this trade to the long side didn't work because a lot of factors weren't lining up, it also can work for you on the other side of the trade, right? Look what happens, it signals a trade to the other side. Just doesn't mean that it's out of play, you now have a volume uh, spike, which is going to signal a trend that's igniting to the other direction. Okay, so volume tells a story, guys. Volume precedes the price every single time. All right, again, volume precedes price. Look at how the low volume into the move ultimately ended up telling you what was going to happen to the stock. All right, that's what you have to understand. If you're able just to read a few simple volume profiles, you're going to be well ahead of the game. So that um, essentially, guys, is volume profile analysis. Um, it's all you need to know. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be hard to do. It doesn't have to take years to understand and learn. It's something that you can literally take this away, go to your uh, trading screen tomorrow when the market opens, and look for volume profile.
right? And if you need more clarification on it, if you need, you know, more assistance trying to understand what we're looking for, you can always join us because um, that's what we do every day is help traders um, bring clarity to their trading and explain this stuff in real time. As I take all my trades, I'm explaining to you guys what I'm seeing, how I'm trading it, the reason I'm doing what I'm doing, um, so you guys can learn uh, in real time because that's where um, it really, um, you really have the ability to learn the most in the shortest period of time. So with that, um, I'll go ahead and um, open up to questions if anyone has them, I'll happy to stick around for a few minutes and um, answer any questions that you guys might have about volume profile. So let's see, Tom has a question here. How do you gauge relative volume? Well, there's a couple ways to do that. Um, first off is really um, what I do is I have kind of a, a benchmark to work off of. In the first five minutes, a stock is trading more than 500,000 shares, you probably have some decent relative volume. And, you know, that's on a kind of a broad basis. Obviously, if it's something like, you know, Facebook or Apple or Twitter, or a higher profile name, obviously the requirement's going to be higher. But on a normal, um, on, a, on a normal situation, if a stock can produce 500,000 in the first five minutes of trading, I'll be interested in it. If it's not, then you know that doesn't mean it just it doesn't have enough attention. The news is not good enough to move it, um, you know. And I don't want to be interested in it. I need really high volume to have really accurate, low risk um, trades. So Bob has a question. Let's see, what time frame are you watching prior to an entry, and do you stay on that time frame during the trade? So that's a good question. You know, it kind of depends on what time of day I'm taking the trade. And when I say time of day, I'm really only trading for the first hour. So if I'm within the first, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, I'm on a really fast time frame. I'm watching, you know, a 30 second or 15 second time frame where I'm watching for these micro patterns and pivots to form watching the volume profile on there because uh, it's very clear if a stock has high momentum. Um, and as we move past the first half hour, I probably will switch back to a five minute and look for the volume profile on there. And then as I see it start to form, if I start to see the volume profile forming and looking like it's ready to potentially get an entry, I'll dial back down to my faster time frame so I can get that precise entry point. Uh, do I have a tier system to get into a trade? Well, typically um, what I do is, again, depending on the volume and, uh, you know, the, the potential that the trade has, um, I usually take uh, about half my normal position size or the size that I want to take on that stock. I take about half of it. And then as it starts to really confirm that it's going to move, I'm going to add into it. Uh, so typically I have multiple entries. I never really take one single entry because the trades that we're taking, they have big potential. They're they're likely to move, um, you know, several percent, which, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking to be in the trade for the longer period of time rather than just scalp it. So I'm taking more entries um, than just one single buy or sell. Um, so David, is there any difference between the volume analysis of micro and large caps? So as you guys know, I, I trade large caps. Um, you know, Ross will trade the small caps. And the, the answer to the question is no. The volume is volume. Right? There's no, there's no, you know, uh, you can't fake volume. Right? Whatever's trading is printing. So you know, the volume is going to be the volume, and it will apply in really any sort of um, vehicle that you're looking to trade. Uh, so I'm showing close bars in time. Do you also use older volume? Yes, yeah, so that's what I was saying is that you're watching the volume profile, 
right? So it's just as if you're watching a, a, a bull flag setup, right? As you get to the apex of the bull flag, if you start to see the price move through that and break through the bull flag, that's likely to tell you that it's gonna revert back higher. Same with the volume. As the volume gets to the apex or has pulled back as far as it can and starts to revert back higher, then the volume is likely to continue higher. It's the same principle. If you watch it in real time, it will definitely make a lot more sense. And that's why I encourage you to put the volume on your chart and make sure you're staring at it because you'll see the signals that I just showed you. So Chris, once you see that the volume has essentially peaked and the stock is not really moving any higher, especially if you're get against a point of support or resistance, depending on the side of the trade that you're on, it's likely to be the point of exhaustion. Um, so that'd be a point in time where I'd likely take off a good portion of my position. Because if the volume is constant, is, is continuing to increase into the move and it's getting higher and higher, you should see a bigger and bigger move, right? As long as that volume keeps um, trending higher, then the, the move is likely to keep going. So what I suggest that I watch the SPY and the tick while watching volume on a particular stock. So. I don't, I don't typically watch it um, while I'm in the stock. I'm more watching it as I'm trying to, to determine whether or not the stock is ready to go. So if the market is in total disconnect with the trade, if I'm looking at a long trade and the market is selling, I'm probably not going to take the trade. I just want to see that we have alignment between the market and the trade that I'm taking. Uh, so for futures, yes, like I said, volume is volume. And, um, you know, whatever is trading is going to print on the volume. So it's uh, it can be used anywhere. So, um, Chris, I understand what you're saying about um, not taking place in real time. However, you just want to see that the volume is beginning to um, change profile, right? The move, the whole idea of this is to see that the volume is changing profile so you can be part of the move that is going to continue to happen, right? I'm not looking for quick scalp trades. That's not what this is meant to do. It's meant to give you a precision entry to be a part of a move that's going to take place over a longer period of time, hence a much bigger move, much bigger profits. So how do you know if a macro trend will break or not using volume? Well, again, when you break a level, or a support or resistance level or a macro level, whatever it is, you have to see volume through the level. It has to be volume at the trigger. Um, this is all stuff that I talk about extensively in um, our large cap trading course, uh, a lot of time spent on you know, technical analysis. So um, you know, I teach you guys uh, in much more depth and entries and exits, um, you know, so on and so forth. Um, within that course, but it's all starts with being able to identify volume. Okay. I think uh, that's kind of a good place to end here, Mike. Uh, as Mike said, definitely check out the Warrior website and take a look at the courses that they offer. They they provide a lot of education and and, and assistance with, with a lot of the questions you guys are looking at. So we certainly should uh, take a look and if you have further questions feel free to uh, email them in I'll get them over to Mike and he'll he'll be happy to, to help you with these but certainly look look at the the warrior website and their and their courses and and what they provide because it is providing a, a lot of education on, on these type of 
topics and questions you guys are looking at. So Mike, we thank you so much for presenting. I hope people uh, took a lot out of this. The, the illustrations and the samples you gave uh, really showed those price trends uh, moving. So uh, we're really happy to have you and we certainly want to uh, have you back sometime soon. So uh, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll be available for us. Great, thanks Rob, appreciate it. Everyone have a great evening and um, take care. Thanks. So yeah, and guys, uh, please note we'll have a presentation uh, recording uh, on our website within a few days. So this will be on the website. So just look for that. We'll send out a notice to everyone who registered that the recording's available, so you can go over it and review it. And uh, re reach out to us with questions. Reach out to Warrior Trading and Mike with questions, and uh, see if it's something you guys uh, want to pursue as as something as part of your trading strategies. Uh, so we're we're really uh, thankful you guys joined us. Look out for future presentations, and uh, we'll we'll be in touch with everyone. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Take care. Thank you.